Hey everyone, how are you? Joining me here today is Michael Mayer. Whoa, I messed up your name. <laughs> Michael Mailer, and we are excited to talk to you today about our film, Blind, as well as anything else you have in mind. So you have our attention, so ask us anything, and, but before we begin, I want to share a little bit more about Blind. So why don't you take it away, Michael? Sure. Well, Blind is a old-fashioned love story <laughs> um, that involves three people, basically. Uh, Alec Baldwin plays a, the blind man. Uh, Demi Moore plays um, the wife of Dylan McDermott's character. They're a high-powered couple living in New York, um, living sort of the life. You know, he's, he's a... Uh, investment guru, shark. She's the trophy wife, and their life goes awry when he does some illegal stuff trading. He goes to jail. She ends up um, being given community service because he was, uh, Dylan's character was involved with using family accounts, so she gets implicated. He goes to jail. She gets community service, which involves reading to the blind, and, um, and she ends up meeting Alec, who's uh, Alec's character, who's uh, Former writer lost his eyesight in a car crash, and they end up developing a romance. And then, ultimately, um, Dylan's character gets out of jail on a technicality, and uh, she has to make a decision: does she stay with her husband, or does she go with the man that she's falling in love with? Yes. So let's get started. Uh, Michael. Well, I, uh, my brother John uh, Mailer wrote the script many, many years ago, and I developed it. Um, I um, was planning on producing it back then. This was going back 13 years. Um, for various reasons, it never quite happened. And uh, I had made a decision that I wanted to jump into directing and um, literally took this script off the desk, blew the, the dust off of the cover, and said, yeah, if I'm going to do it, this is the project for me. Um, well, uh, that's a good question. I um, I love producing. It's how I started in, in this business. I mean, I started as a production assistant, worked my way up to producing. But I got um, to a point where I just wasn't learning creatively anymore, and I felt the, the natural progression was for me to go into directing. Well, um, <clears throat> I have to say it's uh, the, the, the three actors. Um, um, uh, the question is, what, what was it like being with working with Alec, uh, director? So I was very fortunate to have such amazing talents uh, working with me in the film. Oh, boy, there are a lot of directors that I would uh, cite as influences. I mean, I, I think, you know, um, I can name a few, David O. Russell, uh, Bennett Miller, um, Oliver Stone are among a few. For me, which do you like better, acting in movies or on a TV series? You know, it doesn't matter where it is. Um, you know, I learned a long time ago, I was doing a, a play here in New York, and, uh, you know, I worked my ass off on this play, and I think um, three people came that night, and at the end of it, this is what I heard. I really learned a lesson that night. It stayed with me the entire time. I act for myself, right? It's for me, because I enjoy it. I'm not trying to be famous or to make money or to be rich, whatever it is that I'm acting because I love to act. And in that moment when the three people clapped, mm -hmm. I realized that this was for me. It doesn't matter if millions of people are watching, if it's TV, if it's movies, it's theater, it doesn't matter because I'm doing it for me. So that really was a great, great lesson. I understand that. And I also would imagine that, um, you know, it's like race drivers, you know, that you have, you know, uh, stock racing, yeah. you have Formula One, yeah. you have cart. That's right. You know, it's like you, you get to exercise a different part of your, yeah, your brain. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I'm, how is it shooting the film in New York? I, 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 I'm born and raised in New York. Um, <laughs> the story is set in New York, so... There really was no option uh, other than to shoot in New York. I, I, I love shooting here uh, mainly because uh, the city is such a dynamic context for, for storytelling. 
Um, but, you know, you have incredible crews. You have, uh, obviously, the, the, the actor base. I'm not talking about the movie stars, per se, but just the, the, the supporting actors and the day players. Um, there's just such a deep field to draw from that um, it's, it's like a kid in a candy store. You, you just, you know, you, you, you have a, a cornucopia of options. It's a good word. Who's she asking? Is that for me? Both of you. Oh. But I guess it's for you. Your favorite part of your character. Good. You weren't in the movie, were you? <laughs> for a split second, talking yeah, this, to you. Yeah, this, uh, oh, that's right, you were. Yes, my Alfred Hitchcock moment. <laughs> oh, this, yeah, that, you know, as soon, as soon as I read this script, I was like, damn, I have to do this movie, because there was something, you know, it just spoke to me about this guy, and I think it was because he was pretending to be something that he wasn't, you know, that he, he, he crawled up. He was like a rat. You know, he crawled up from the sewer, and he made it on Wall Street. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. he, got, he, got, he got all the things that he dreamed of as a kid, but it was never who he was, you know? And uh, I love the cracks in his psyche, and uh, I think that kind of comes out in the, in the movie, you know, that he was Absolutely. never that guy. So yeah. that, was, that was the favorite part for me. Yeah, and I think, you know, uh, with characters like yours, um, and you really tapped into him, just yeah, in, into the, the ether, was spooky. But um, you know, it's it's for guys like uh, your character. It's really, you know, it's this never-ending pursuit yeah. of acquiring more and more. That's right. And you're never able to really enjoy it yeah. because once you get to that threshold, there's the next threshold and yeah. the one beyond yeah. that. And it's almost this like eternal restlessness. That drives almost the, the psychopathy of the character. Yeah, it's really like it's 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 a metaphor for the world right now because everybody's so damn greedy. You know, they, yeah, there's, there's, there's yeah. no there there. There's just more, 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 more. There's no definition of yeah. what is enough. It's, yeah. it's, I just watched the uh, the Madoff movie on on HBO and yeah. I was just reminded of, of of our experience and because you know that's really that's the pinnacle of, of evil, absolutely you know, yeah of, in terms yeah. of Wall Street. And, and none of these guys, by the way, start out. Evil. It's not like they set out right, to, to right. you know, uh, screw people over or destroy the world. It's just you know, in this never-ending quest for accumulation, they, mm -hmm. they, their moral compass alters mm -hmm. to a point where it's uh, they probably become unrecognizable even to themselves. Uh, Wendy asks for me, what was it like working with Alec? I mean, I can I can say wow. This is a wow. <laughs> um, you know, I had known Alec a long time ago. We used to hang out in the 90s, and then we sort of lost touch, so it was great to, to, to hang out with him again and to do this. We had just one epic scene in the movie, which is... It's one hell of a scene. Yeah, it's a great scene. Yeah. Wait till you see the movie and, and watch this scene, because it's we, we only have one scene in the movie, but it's uh, it's worth it just to watch that. Um, you know, he's Alec is uh, he's really just so talented. I mean, he does he does everything. You know, he's um, he was the leading man, and then... Was you know, a comedian, and then he does drama. I mean, he really is. Uh, he's, he's. I just. He's had a re remarkable career at this point. For me, what was it like on the set for this project? Well, you know, this was uh, uh, again a labor of love because we didn't have a lot of money to make this movie. You know, we had it. We only had. What do we do? Like three, four takes. Yeah, on average. You know? about, yeah. So, you know. I know when I when I do a movie like this that you have to come fully prepared because there's no there's no wiggle room here, you know you have to ha have to know exactly what you're doing. So the set was really tight, you know it was like we had to, we knew that we had to accomplish a lot in a very little time. Oh yes, uh, yeah, I have this. Uh, Michael was actually there. For the premiere of yes, Sugar, yeah. and, um, and uh, when we were in Florida, and uh, yes, Sugar is going to continue. There's going to be more episodes. Uh, again, this is a, a project near and dear to my heart about a runaway girl. So uh, stay tuned for more Sugar because uh, more episodes are are coming up. For me, well, what's the best reason for why I should go see this film? Well, there's so many different reasons. First of all, you know, this, these are my favorite kinds of movies. My favorite movies are from the 70s. I know yours are as well. And, you know, this reminds me of those movies. You know, um, it, as Michael said in the beginning, this is a love story. And we don't see those movies anymore. You know, we, we're seeing 
superheroes and things blowing up all the time, but we don't get real human stories. And this is a uh, this is one of those movies, and to see Alec and Demi on screen together again is remarkable, and uh, the story itself is fantastic, and uh, there's raw emotion in this movie, which I really appreciate, and I think Michael did a great job directing it. Many reasons. Thank you. <laughs> For me, uh, not to put you on the spot, but how did Michael do it? Well, I just told you. He, Michael was, uh, was great, and I think we had a, a great simpatico in this movie and we're on the same page and we're all making the same movie you know sometimes when you're making movies people are making one movie another an actor is playing in another movie and they're not no one's in the, in the same movie and I felt that um, everybody was in the same movie in, in, in this experience so that's what I really appreciated and, and Michael sort of you know was guiding us and, and helping us and, and, and had a true vision of what he wanted for the movie Well, uh, we, we um, the music in the film um, is actually, uh, if I may say, qu quite good. I, I had the luxury of working with some very experienced composers, um, Sasha Lazard, uh, Amy Lee, the, the lead singer from Evanescence. Um, we had songs contributed by uh, Cindy Morgan and Anna Hampton Calloway. Uh, you know, obviously music is so critical to... Um, the telling of any story that, you know, a good soundtrack can really um, improve a film tremendously, uh, just as a bad soundtrack can really diminish it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, music is, is needless to say, is essential to the telling of any story on film. Yeah, it's funny how, you know, too much music just takes you out of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, that's exactly right. You can, over, you can overkill mm -hmm. with music mm -hmm. where it just sort of drowns out um, you know, the storytelling or becomes too obvious a, yeah. a band-aid, you know, to yeah. cover the or mask the, the weaknesses in the story. I always like source music myself, you know, it makes sense. You see, you see these movies nowadays, there's like a song for every scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't you answer that one, Michael? Uh, what inspires me about character development? Well, um, you know, f as an independent filmmaker, uh, to me the story really comes from character. Um, I mean, yes, plot is essential, but y you know, I'm I'm interested in what makes people tick. You know, what why they behave the way they do. You know, wh what are their um, you know their their ulterior motives. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, c characters to me are, are the most interesting when they're complex and they have more than one motive. Um, or subtext behind them. So I, I you know, personally, I, I, I love character-based film. Mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, certainly on an independent level, um, because it's and even on a bigger level, you know, you know, it's funny that we have so many Marvel stories, you know, uh, 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 you know, comic book-based films these days, um, and the ones that really work are the ones that actually have interesting characters that have their own emotional arc that are, you know, suffering in some way. That's very. Uh, palpable and relatable, um, so it's it's uh, it, it really begins with with character, in my opinion. Uh, for Dylan, um, did you know Demi well before the film? Did you talk much with her before shooting about your relationship with the film. Um, I think I had met her a few times in LA or something, and then yeah, we talked on the phone before. Uh, about you know how we saw our relationship and and what we both wanted and desired for um, each other in the movie and um, you know a, a lot of times it is hard because you'll meet people for the first time on set and then you have to kind of like get into the rhythm of who they are and you know what they're comfortable with mm -hmm. and all that stuff that's why I always think that rehearsal is so important to have a few days where you can sort of, I did this movie with Jodie Foster and we had like a week of rehearsal yeah. and it was just so great because by the time we got to the set, everyone was relaxed. Right. You know, and so much of making movies is relaxation, you know, so, but I thought that we had a good working relationship with each other and we, it was very believable, her and I together. So that's Absolutely. I, I mean, you mm -hmm. really got a sense that you've been married for quite some yeah. time. And, yeah. And it was a relationship that evolved into many stages along the way. Yeah, um, I thought you did a great job. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, the two of you are very um, 
engaging in mm -hmm. that dynamic because mm -hmm. it, it is changing. It's evolving as the movie evolves. Uh, is this film going to be in select theaters or nationwide? Um, well, uh, both. Um, it's it's opening uh, July 14th um, across the country um, in major cities, and uh, yeah, just uh, look for it in your your uh, your local. So theater. It's, it's going to be in theaters, and it's also going to VOD same day. Right? And it's also going to VOD the same day. Okay. Yes. Great. So that's good to know. Thank you so much. Right, yeah, I really appreciate you guys great. coming out. I should have